And I could see other women being attacked and harassed for speaking up. I thought, well, they're brave. I should be brave too. I didn't realise how controversial it would be when I started talking about this. Sex is binary, immutable and important. Saying that was seen as being not worthy of respect in a democratic country, a democratic society, which is odd because all of our laws are based on sex being binary and immutable and sometimes important. My story is just one of hundreds of people who've been disciplined at work or who are scared to speak up. If this had happened to me when I was your age, I don't know if I would have stood up to it in the same way, but it happened to me when I was in a time in my life where I could and I couldn't see that I could back down from it. Underlying all of this, there is a material reality of sex. Sex matters and it shouldn't take courage to say so. All of the debates about other things can't happen unless we're able to talk about reality. We need to be able to talk about reality in order to be able to negotiate our rights. Protections against sex discrimination, you can't have those if you can't talk about what sex is. How can we challenge institutional capture? Organisations are adopting Stonewall law rather than the actual law. And underlying this is policy capture of all of our government institutions because they're being trained by, advised by and rated by the set of organisations that are pushing this. A quarter of employees work for organisations that are covered by the Stonewall Diversity Scheme. So their employer has made themselves accountable to Stonewall and to Stonewall's interpretation of the law rather than to the actual law. The more that we can use the law, the more that we can clarify the law so that people can say, you know, this is not just me, this is just the law. There are nine protected characteristics in the Equality Act. Why does your equality monitoring statement not consider sex? And if you look at what that law actually says, it says that you can have a single sex service where a person can object to the presence of a member of the opposite sex. So it's a very low bar for why you should be allowed to have a single sex service. It's not about risk. It's not about proving that someone is going to attack you or that they're a safety risk. It's not about defending the most vulnerable women. It's not about having to disclose histories of trauma. It's about really everyday situations. And I think if we can kind of push back to those laws, then that then helps to protect all of the other stuff, the vulnerable women, the specialist services, because we shouldn't be having to negotiate at that point. It should be a much clearer expectation that there are rules in society to protect men and women, and everyone needs to follow those rules. The more that we can use the law to protect women's rights and to protect sex-based rights, then the easier it will become for people to speak up in their workplace. The way this has happened has been undercover when it was no debate things were getting pushed through but once we bring it out into the open i think we win and the proposal for gender self-id was defeated largely by women fighting back making their voices heard making the evidence heard every policy that comes up now where they're trying to push gender quietly or trying to push self-id quietly is now vulnerable to this kind of challenge and I think it's very specific to the UK that we have done this and it has come from the left and it has come from feminists and radical feminists that have organised to do this and so it's really important that we push it and that we expose it to sunlight and to democratic scrutiny because if we can show that this stuff can be unpicked then hopefully that can help others in other countries. Underlying this, I think, for me, is democracy. How can you have laws that you can't talk about? That, for me, is the bottom line. Do you have any advice on how we can influence the debate in Parliament? We should remember that Twitter is not life. Twitter is not the electorate. This has never been put to the electorate. This stuff doesn't play well on the doorstep. The idea that somebody with a penis can be in a women's changing room in a women's shower with women and girls is not accepted 
by the electorate. And the idea that you have to be a turf or a radical feminist to object to that is not the reality. It is important that we mobilise and that we get people talking to their MPs. It's really important. And it's important that we get the evidence to them, but it's also important that they hear how this is affecting people's lives and the emotional side. I think we do have to win hearts and minds and it is affecting people's lives. It is affecting women and girls when this battle is won and I think it will be won I think we will look back in future and say that was a crazy time when people thought that sex didn't matter or sex wasn't real and where they were telling children that if they played with the wrong toys they might be born in the wrong body we will look back and think that was that was madness.